Thank you so Welcome. much. Let me tell you a story. Ich liebe Ruder. I love rowing. A few days ago, as I'm going down to the boathouse of my rowing club, 120 years old rowing club, only one type of wooden boat, Empacher, hasn't changed for the last 100 years. I noticed something new in the corner, a beautiful red slim boat waiting there just for me. So what do I do? I pick it up, go down to the river, take it for a nice cruise. Just me and the birds, I can hear the water and my oars in it, no blackberry, silence. It was great. When back in the club, as we co I, I was curious, where is this boat made? Who makes it? Where does it come from? I checked it out, found a sticker. Guess what? Made in China. This is when I knew this conference is right. Right time, right place, definitely right people. Welcome to Hasso Platinum Ventures Conference. This day is all about entrepreneurship, networking, sharing, learning, and of course, fun. You are going to enjoy this day, I can guarantee. This event is dedicated to China and to understand this phenomenon. And before we dive into the conference, let me highlight for you some unusual facts and figures about this country that you may not be aware of. China actually has an everyday impact on our lives, whether we are aware of it and whether we are not. And I will give you some examples. Did you know, for example, that China not only took over Germany as the biggest exporter of the world, it's now the biggest importer of the world. We are used to think of China as a country to buy cheap products from. We have to get used to the fact that every third S-Class, Mercedes S-Class, is now sold to Chinese people. They are also buying a lot of consumer goods from us. This is the target market for many of us nowadays. Not only that, talking about cars, did you know that China today makes more cars than US and Germany combined? 14 million cars they made in 2009, up from 5,000, only 5,000 cars in 1982, something like 5 million cars, like, exactly like Germany, two years ago, and now 14 million in one year. A different subject. A couple of months ago, there was a Fortune magazine cover story about Chinese buying American companies. Did you know that China has spent $9 billion on acquiring American companies last year? And this number is growing and growing. American-made, Chinese-owned was the topic of this article, and many people in, in the US were interviewed for this article, and I did the same thing when I met Mr. Joseph Ackerman in a conference recently, asking the same question. How do you feel like working for a Chinese owner? And you know what? Nobody cares. As long as they get a job, including Mr. Mr. Ackerman himself, that's what he said, he just will do his job. But the ownership is going to, to change in a very short while in many of the companies we know. Another interesting subject. Did you know that 54% of counterfeit goods are made in China? When I was traveling with my family um, last year in uh, North India, even in the most remote villages, uh, when buying cheap souvenirs, when I flipped it over, I looked at, at the sticker, like I 
did with the rowing boat, I always find out the same thing, made in China. This is amazing. In India, cheap products are made in China. A completely different subject, gold, money. I can't even say the number because there are so many zeros in it, but China has 25 more time, more money, cash reserves than the US. Not only that, this number is growing, but 200 billion every year. 200 billion dollars of American wealth is shipped to China every year. This is the trade balance between China and the US. Another interesting story. Did you know that 25% of the Chinese population are overweight? And this is more than the entire population of the US. I'm sure McDonald's have figured that out. Do you know what virtual goods is? If not, I will explain to those who don't know, because we have a company that sells a lot of them in Germany. It's all those branded sunglasses, jackets, and so on. People buy, usually teenagers, for the virtual avatar in, in the internet, for online games, online socializing. This market alone is $1.5 billion in China, much larger than the American market, and this is still growing year by year. It's a huge market just for virtual goods. Internet. I'm sure you know that, but I will remind you that there are 384 million Internet users in China, again, larger than, than the entire US population. I'm sure you didn't know this story. This is a Chinese map. You can't, maybe you can't read the letters, but it's, I can guarantee it's Chinese. Look, doesn't it look a bit strange? You know why? China is in the middle. And you know why that? I will tell you. Because the, the Mandarin word for China is Zhonggu. Can a Chinese person help me with the pronouncing? Zhonggu. Zhonggu. <laughs> Meaning middle country, implying China is the center of the world. You can see it here. What else can I tell you about China? Oh yeah, when visiting China uh, a couple of years ago and three years ago, I noticed a very interesting phenomenon. I was speaking in a conference and at the beginning, the first visit, I couldn't talk to anyone. Actually, I had to be accompanied with a translator during my whole visit. The second time, recently, I was surrounded by people speaking fluent Chinese. Sorry, English. <laughs> Chinese is this. Now I know that you're listening to me. That's good. <laughs> they were speaking fluent English, and I was asking myself, and then I asked them, why? How come within one year you can speak so well English? And you know what they said? Everybody told me, this is a government top priority. So once the government set it as a top priority, everybody has to do it. Hundreds of million people now, usually young adults, professionals, they all speak English. Just try. Interesting. In another visit to China, you can see me here between two Chinese people. I gave a, a lecture uh, in front of 500 students. It was a trip organized by my friend here, Florian. Florian Schweitzer, and he can testify. I was surrounded in the coffee break by hundreds of people. Everybody asking for my business card. I actually had probably 10 or 20. I ran out of them in one minute. All trying to get an advice, to tell me about their startup, about their dream, to learn from us. They all want to become entrepreneurs, all these Chinese people. I give so many speeches in, uh, in lectures in Germany to students, to business people. And you know what happened when I go to the coffee break? Nobody approaches me. <laughs> so this is China today. What else? I can speak and speak about China, but what other opinion leaders have to say about China? Let's hear what they have to say. Some people I know personally and I really appreciate. For example, David Rubinstein, the head of and founder of Carlyle Group, the largest private equity firm in the world. He said, 
Chinese firms are our biggest competitors to buy private companies in, in Europe, in the US. I wouldn't expect David Rubenstein to say such a thing. He's so powerful. Another person I really appreciate for at least one thing, he's very sincere, direct, and frank, Mr. B Mr. Bush. During his last days of presidency, when visiting China for the Olympic Games, he said, and this is very interesting, I've abandoned free market principles to save the free market system. Mr. Bush actually sold his soul to save his own. I read it again. It's a contradiction by itself, but it really resembles what's happening today between US and China. I've abandoned free market principles to save the free market system of the free world. But he did sell, sell, sold his soul to the devil. <laughs> Another person I really appreciate, the editor of Newsweek magazine, wrote a very good book, a bestseller, the post-American world about China. In one sentence, we can sum it, sum it up to this sentence, and this is from him, Farid Zakaria. China wants everything, but offers very little in return. And finally, another good friend, Mr. Thomas Friedman, a journalist, New York Times columnist. I read him every second day in the New York Times. Very clever guy. He's an expert on China. Actually, he was supposed to be here. You couldn't, but he promised to be in this conference next year. A very good speaker. He says, the saying in China is, if you're only one in a million, there are still 1,300 people exactly like you. 